A lawsuit is filed seeking damages stemming from a deadly 2015 crash that followed a police chase. The suit claims negligence and wrongful death against the Maryland Transportation Authority, several of its officers, and the suspect, Michael Brown, in a December 2015 MDTA police chase. Now, back then, police chased Brown from Baltimore City and 14 miles up 95. He reached speeds of 130 miles per hour before crossing over the median and crashing head on into Sanja Johnson Baker's car. She died in the crash, as well as Brown. Two other family members in her car were hurt, and they are named in the lawsuit. Lawyers say MDTA police could have prevented this from happening since it was a threat to public safety and pressed the need to have the state's pursuit laws looked over. A woman was rushed to the hospital after being pulled from a burning home. Crews got to call to a West Baltimore home on North Bentlow Street just before 5.30 this morning. And when they got there, they saw the fire. They saw the smoke pouring out of the second floor of the home. The 56-year-old woman had to be rescued, taken to the hospital in serious condition. A vacant building is reduced to rubble in the west side of the city. The building collapsed around 11 last night on West Baltimore Street. Luckily, no one was hurt. And if you think you're good at chess, you are no match for one 12-year-old. Now, this Baltimore kid's a champion. Find out where the, this kid got his start playing the game. Plus, a wife finds out she will be able to save her husband's life. We'll tell you about the cute way she told him she's a perfect match. And later, it's Amazon's biggest sale day of the year. But before you click check out, you need to check out the latest Matter for Mallory story. That's coming up right here on ABC2. A young chess champ says playing the game at his local barber shop helped him to become the player he is today. A little off the top and checkmate. And it helped that the 12-year-old did something no kid in Baltimore has ever done. Here we are on St. Paul, where a barber shop is being credited for helping one pawn become king. 12-year-old Kyrie Myrick plays first in his division at the U.S. Chess Federation Super Nationals this year. And he's the first one from Baltimore to do so. I ran back to my team saying, everyone, I won. I won. And everyone just congratulating me and just, it was a good experience. He says he practices two hours a day online and with his after school team. Check me. But he says his time playing here in the barbershop has taught him how to be a true competitor. Chess has been a, a staple in our barbershop. And that's the culture that we developed around here. People just randomly stop in, like, who's playing chess? Who are the chess players in here? And he says he cut Myrick's hair before the big event and could see he was ready. I said, bring it home. I said, bring it home, baby. You know, I said, we want that chip here. We want you to bring it here. And Myrick says that wisdom not only helped him on that day, but now helps him in every game that he ever plays. Shooty Yachty taught me that be humble more. Um, don't underestimate your opponent and just be like, Everyone in this room has a chance to win. I just need to take it. Arthur, look what he did last month. Look at it. Yeah, I think you know these guys. There you go. Kyrie was playing chess with third baseman Manny Machado and all-star second baseman Jonathan Scope and first base coach Wayne Kirby. And guess who won? They didn't even stand a chance. I mean, <laughs> it was a sweep. Wait, look at Jonathan Shake. I've never been beaten by a 12-year-old before. Guy's good at his That's game. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Kermit the Frog is getting a new voice. Really? Steve Whitmere, the voice of Kermit, is now stepping down. Whitmire voiced the character since 1990, and he's also voiced many other characters, including Rizzo the Rat, Stopler, and Ernie, up until 2014. Longtime Muppets performer Matt Vogel is going to be taking over the role as Kermit. The Olympics will be making its way back to the United States. It's a guarantee that Los Angeles will host either the 2024 or 2028 Summer Games. Olympic Committee members voted today to allow a dual award of the next two games. That would ensure that L.A. and Paris will each host future Olympics. Now, the exact year depends on if the two cities and the IOC can reach an agreement. We look forward to working together, maybe not in competition, but collaboration with Paris. To be clear, we're competing for 2024. So if nothing is set by September, the committee will vote on the location for the 2024 games. That means the other city would host in 2028.
exciting. And now from ABC2, Maryland's most accurate forecast. We'll start off with a live look across the entire state and region. Things look pretty good, but notice the scary skies over in Frederick. They're being clipped by a thunderstorm right now. Here's a look at some of those low-lying clouds. Most of this activity is actually north of the area, north of the city, but it's a different scenario at Bel Air. Notice the blue sky that they have. Temperature at around 90 degrees, but it feels like 92. The dew points at 65 and winds are from the southwest at 7 miles per hour. And it's going to be the air that you can wear for the next 72 hours. Notice that we have temperatures near 91 with the real fill and Dundalk Inner Harbor at 94, Towson at 93. Most of these numbers are actually in the mid 90s. Few exceptions. Cool breeze off the lake for, or I should say off the bay for northeast. They're at 88. Manchester's at 89. One thing I will mention, this is just starting it off. We're only going to get hotter from here. Your day tomorrow will be hotter and then I believe the hottest day is going to be Thursday. Statewide, just looking at the heat index, you'll find that Easton's near 100 degrees at 98. I think this type of temperature will be widespread across the entire area as we go into the day for tomorrow. Here's a look at when the heat reaches its peak. This is the heat index here. I'm thinking Thursday will be pretty close to triple digits as far as how it feels, but then we'll have a front move through and therefore Saturday and Sunday we go back to the typical heat that you would expect to feel for mid-July. So it's only going to be a brief heat wave that we're dealing with currently. Some brief relief is possible though. We do have a shower and also a thunderstorm actually moving through Frederick County right now. There's a look at it just north of Frederick. This is going to move over towards Carroll County. The grand scenario here, we have an upper level disturbance. Most of this activity is going to be moving in our direction. So if you find yourself fortunate enough to be under one of these heavier showers, hopefully they don't cause any uh, damaging wind. We do have a threat for that, but if it's just plain old rain. Should be a nice refreshing change with those temps. Futurecast does keep us in play to see some of the showers and storms for the rest of this evening. Skies will clear up once the sun sets, but as we go into the day tomorrow, we'll freeze it here by 5 p.m. on Wednesday. We're still talking highs in the mid 90s, not factoring in the heat index, which more than likely is going to feel closer to the hundreds as we go towards your Wednesday. Now for Thursday, more of the same. We'll expect these showers and storms to be pretty consistent where they're going to be sitting pretty near the triple digits. For the rest of this evening, However, we go back down into the 70s. Clouds will be there. We'll keep the chance of scattered showers and storms in play for the rest of this evening. But once the sun sets, I think that's when we'll put a lid on the atmosphere. Uh, but things reignite. We call it a carbon copy for tomorrow. We'll be near 80 degrees by 8 a.m. and going with a high of 95. Chances of storms in the afternoon and early evening. Hazy sunshine and the hottest day of the week. I'm still thinking it's going to be Thursday with a high temp of 97. Going to feel like 100 plus. And once again, can't count out those isolated showers or storms. The heat dome is going to remain in place, but there is going to be a stationary boundary that will set up. Once this arrives, that should break the heat. Therefore, you'll notice some changes as you look at that seven day forecast for the next three days. We'll be either at or above 90 degrees, but notice what happens with the weekend. We go back to average. Our average high is about 88. I'm thinking we'll get that for Saturday and Sunday. Multiple chances of seeing some rain. So it's just one of those carbon copy forecasts, you know. Catherine Control doesn't like average. She wants above average. She doesn't like average. Well, she's going to get at least three days above oh, average. That's going to be harsh. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Well, thank you, Mike. A baseball fan who's been battling kidney disease for 14 years gets some very good news from his wife. Yeah, well, watch this. Watch Steve Winfrey's wife, Heather, use a baseball card to reveal that she is a donor match. Now Steve will be a rookie recipient at Vanderbilt, right? <laughs> found out today. Oh, I'm at work. And I'm a match. And you can be getting a kidney. <laughs> All right, everybody, just swallow. Because that she, she's undergoing more testing at a Nashville, Tennessee transplant center, and if all goes well, the procedure will happen before the end of the month. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Well, becoming a mom is a special and stressful time. Yeah, but pregnancy doesn't come without its risk, and it turns out with advances in technology, death rates remain unchanged. Plus, a military plane crashes in Mississippi, killing 16. We hear from a man who saw it happen and the latest on the investigation. ABC2 News is a proud partner of GBMC Healthcare. are born to U.S. moms every year. But is pregnancy as safe as you think? ABC's Janae Norman explains. 
Pregnancy is a time of excitement and all too often a tense time as well. For moms to be, pregnancy is not a risk free proposition. And now an updated report suggests that pregnancy related death rates have not improved in the past decade. The American College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists comparing pregnancy deaths between 2006 and 2010 to those seen between 2011 and 2013 found the rates to be essentially the same. Some good news. The rates of death from hemorrhage, pregnancy-related high blood pressure, and anesthesia complications all declining since the early 2000s. But that's more than offset by the higher cardiovascular disease and other illnesses women have before they're pregnant. As more and more pregnant women in the U.S. suffer chronic medical conditions or are obese, it makes pregnancy riskier. You know the airline message, put your own mask on before you help others. Focus on your health before getting pregnant to make sure that your pregnancy is as risk-free as possible. With this Medical Minute, I'm Janae Norman. You're watching the station that works for you. Now, ABC2 News at 5. Such pressure. All you heard about was Amazon Prime. And if you didn't purchase something in the next couple hours, you'll never be able to shop again. We're going to take a look at this Amazon magic. 15 Marines and a Navy Corpsman are dead after their transport plane crashed in the Mississippi Delta. It was a training flight from North Carolina to California. Emails show Russia had the dirt on Hillary Clinton and that those, including Donald Trump Jr., were eager to see the information. Well, it is online retail giant Amazon's biggest sales day of the year. The third annual Amazon Prime Day kicked off last night at 9 and it runs until 3 a.m. Did you buy anything yet? I did not. No. Okay, well, <laughs> maybe we can do something right now. Millions are expected to take advantage of this online deal. And ABC2 News' Mallory Safaste has a warning, though, for those who are too quick to click without doing any research because if it matters to you, it must matter to Mallory. The manufactured holiday surpasses some of the biggest shopping days of the year. The 30-hour event known as Amazon Prime Day offers Prime customers exclusive deals on thousands of items. So if you're in the market for a good deal, you probably want to look at electronics. Amazon Prime is really stocking up when it comes to televisions. Last year, they sold 90,000 TVs in one day. John Goodrich is a Prime customer. He didn't get his TV on Prime Day, but submitted his order just a few months ago. When I got the TV, it was cracked, and it wasn't due to the shipping. It was just a faulty TV to begin with. He reached out to Amazon, who then contacted the third-party seller who Goodrich purchased the TV from. It was a month of just going back and forth with different customer service representatives at, at Amazon to try to get my situation fixed. Then he got this response from Amazon. I'm so sorry, but we can't offer any additional insight or action on this matter. The apologies didn't really change the fact that I was out $350 because I had a broken TV. According to Amazon's policy, if an item is not directly sold by them or through a fulfillment center, then it's up to the third party seller to complete the order and handle customer service. Also, a product with prime shipping, that doesn't mean that the seller is Amazon something Goodrich wasn't aware of. I didn't look into who I was buying the product from. I just assumed since I have Amazon Prime that I was buying it directly through Amazon. And then later I found out that it was through this <laughs> company that I couldn't even track down via Google or the internet. And that was my problem, so lesson learned. He was able to get his money back through his credit card company, but he wants to warn others about his nightmare experience so they don't make the same mistake, particularly on days like this when consumers act fast to strike lightning deals. Make sure you know who it is that you're, that's on the other end of the transaction, who you're buying from. In Baltimore, Mallory Safoste, ABC2 News. All right, Amazon's A to Z guarantee covers purchases from third-party sellers, and John said that guarantee didn't help in this case. And according to Amazon, half of all of their sales come from third-party sellers. Some tips to avoid buyer's remorse, read the seller's reviews, look at the brands you know, and if you prefer to offer from order from Amazon directly or the manufacturer, make sure that they're the ones listed as the seller. Sound like I've shopped there before, doesn't it? I'm pretty impressed with myself. If you have a matter for Mallory, she wants to hear from you right now. You can email her at Mallory at WMAR.com. Well, get ready for some heat. All right, we're expecting some temperatures to reach to the mid to upper 90s. Meteorologist Mike Taylor is following the latest for us, the heat. Yeah, the heat. <laughs> and it's, uh, I've been, 
Dark color suit was a bad choice of attire today. I'll tell you that. I felt it the second I stepped outside. One of those days where you have to keep the door open before you get into the car. Well, we're going to add to the heat as we go into the day tomorrow. And I'm thinking Thursday will be the hottest day of the week and perhaps maybe even the year thus far. But right now we'll focus on the showers and thunderstorms that are moving through the area. Satellite and radar still showing moving through Frederick County and now northern Carroll County. We have some heavy rain and also some thunderstorms moving through the area. Just received a report from New Windsor that they can hear the thunder in that vicinity. But from Bel Air right now, temps are at around 90 degrees. Feels like 92, but this is at BWI. Other locations slightly warmer than that. You'll find Cockeysville pretty close to those low 90s, but uh, for the eastern shore, I've been noticing the east and checked in about 30 minutes ago with the heat indice of around 98 degrees. And once again, tomorrow is going to be hotter than today. So here's your forecast for this evening. We'll take the 80s down into the upper 70s. Humidity is not going to change and neither will the pattern. We'll talk about this heat wave continuing into the day tomorrow and also let you know when the weekend gets here and how it's going to look. All right, Michael, thank you. A man pleads guilty to stabbing his father to death. Leobardo Jim Jem Ramirez stabbed his father in the neck at their home in Annapolis back in February. It all happened right in front of his mom. His father died at the hospital. Jalapa Ramirez faces up to 20 years in prison. His sentencing is set for September the 29th. Firefighters battled a two alarm blaze in South Baltimore this morning. It happened at Stevens Auto Shop on East Patapsco Avenue around 4 a.m. Propane tanks were inside the warehouse when the fire sparked, but there is no word on a cause tonight. Luckily, no one was hurt. Well, this is big plans. The plan to move the FBI headquarters to our state or even Virginia is not going to happen. It's going to be scrapped. The federal government made the announcement today to halt the decade long plan to close the agency's D.C. headquarters. The General Services Administration says it does not have enough money to move forward with the plans. The Obama administration had sought more than $1 billion for the project, but Congress left it underfunded by about $882 million. Our top stories we're working on for you right now. Cody Mitchell and Cheyenne Otten were identified as the suspects in a police shooting in Mount Airy. Howard County Police Corporal Thomas Townsend and an officer first class star Sean Lucky were in the area for a joint investigation when they saw two people burglarizing a home on Manor Drive. Now, they tried to pull the van over, but the couple drove at the police cruiser. Officers fired, shooting and killing Mitchell. Otten was arrested and charged with burglary and theft. The NTSB says a CSX transportation conductor and trainee were checking on a defective rail car when they were hit and killed by another train. It happened last month near Washington, D.C.'s Union Station. Now, a preliminary report out today says the workers got out of their train after dispatch alerted them there might be an overheated bearing or a wheel on the locomotive. The pair was walking back to the, uh, when another train slammed into them going 73 miles per hour. Both died at the scene. And a vacant building is reduced to rubble here on the west side. The building collapsed around 11 o'clock last night right on West Baltimore Street. Luckily, nobody was hurt. The military community is coming together tonight after a deadly plane crash near Greenwood, Mississippi. 16 military members were killed in this crash. The KC-130 refueling plane took off from Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point in North Carolina. Witnesses heard a loud bang, then saw the plane corkscrew into a field, leaving debris in a five-mile area. Crackling noise. Is it something in it? It was all over, it, but it was loud. Is it scary? Is it scary? Because after I've seen all the black smoke. Is it some? You know, it's horrifying. The plane was taking 15 Marines, one Navy service member, and equipment to a naval airfield, El Centro, California, when it went down. Some of the victims on that plane were from a reserve squadron based in Newburgh, New York. The military says the investigation is ongoing, but there is no indication of foul play. The father of a U.S. soldier arrested on terrorism charges speaks out. Prosecutors say Sergeant First Class Akaika Kang pledged allegiance to ISIS and attempted to provide military documents to the group. They also say he told an undercover agent he wanted to kill a bunch of people. Now, his father, Clifford Kang, says he was concerned about his son after he returned home. I, I told him uh, I was very concerned when he came back from uh, uh, Afghanistan and uh, uh, Iraq that uh, maybe he had PTSD. 
Kang was arrested after a year-long investigation. Court records show he was reported in 2011 for having pro-ISIS views. Hundreds showed up today to pay their respects to a New York State Trooper, Joel Davis, who was killed in the line of duty Sunday. Dozens of officers escorted him from Syracuse back to Jefferson County as civilians lined the sidewalks to watch the procession. Davis was fatally shot while responding to a domestic violence call over the weekend. Justin Walters, a Fort Drum soldier, has been charged with killing Davis and Walters' wife. A British court has set a new hearing for the parents of Charlie Gard, the British infant born with an incurable genetic disease. The hearing is set for this coming Thursday, and Charlie's parents will have another chance to submit new evidence. They want Charlie to be moved to the United States for an experimental treatment, but doctors originally told them they weren't legally able to move him, so they go to court on Thursday. The USS Fitzgerald is now being assessed after being moved to a dry dock. The U.S. Navy destroyer was damaged last month after colliding with a container ship. Seven sailors died in the collision after the container ship ripped a 12 by 17 foot hole above or below the waterline. Crews will assess the damage, make all the necessary repairs and decide what are they going to do with this destroyer. The president is defending his oldest son as a, quote, high-quality person, even as Donald Trump Jr. revealed today what is, a, is as close to a smoking gun as we've seen on the Trump campaign's Russia connections. And our political correspondent Mike Sachs finds the president's applause for his son's transparency may be misguided. If it's what you say, I love it. That was Donald Trump Jr.'s response to news that a Russian lawyer with Kremlin connections was offering him documents that, quote, would incriminate Hillary Clinton and her dealings with Russia and would be very useful to your father. Yes, that's all in writing. And Trump Jr., trying to get ahead of the New York Times bombshell report, posted the emails himself. In them, Trump Jr.'s go-between said the lawyer's meeting request, quote, is part of Russia and its government's support for Mr. Trump. Six days later, Trump Jr. took the meeting with then-campaign manager Paul Manafort and Jared Kushner, who didn't disclose this meeting when obtaining a security clearance for his current post as senior advisor to the president. We're now beyond obstruction of justice in terms of what's being investigated. This is moving into perjury, false statements, uh, and even into potentially treason. The T word is a bit strong for what we've learned today. But Trump Jr.'s emails do suggest campaign leadership showed interest in colluding with Russia for electoral gain and may have broken campaign finance laws in doing so. I don't know what Mr. Trump Jr.'s uh, version of the facts are. I definitely he has to testify that email is disturbing. Now, Trump Jr. is calling the entire meeting the most insane nonsense he's ever heard. And he's offered to work with congressional investigators eager to find out what his father, the president, knew and when he knew it. The National Weather Service says an EF0 tornado touched down just outside of Deer Creek, Indiana last night. A woman caught the twister on camera. In the video, you can hear her saying it's on the ground and it's growing. The NWS says the tornado traveled just over one mile with wind speeds around 70 miles per hour. A woman is being charged with immigration violations after she was left hanging from a fence. U.S. Border Patrol agents in Arizona say they saw two people using a harness to lower the woman down onto the United States side of the wall. However, they left her when the agents approached. The woman was found dangling 15 feet above the ground. Well, Jamie, you've got a dog. Yes. And I don't know if you got her because you've heard that getting a dog would make it less likely crooks would break in. No crooks. <laughs> no crooks. Yes, yeah, so this, this is a great story. What happens, though, if the burglar gets in? We put some pups to the test. Plus, <laughs> when a family was pulled out to see, nothing stopped this group of strangers from coming to their rescue. The video you've got to see coming up right here on ABC2. And let's head over to Manchester, Manchester Valley High School. Things look pretty good. We had some mostly sunny skies, partly cloudy skies later in the afternoon, but some showers are moving through. Coming up, we'll talk about not only that, but also this heat wave.